So the Chicago Blackhawks are easily the worst team in the NHL right now. The San Jose Sharks started the season losing like 11 or 12 straight games. And in back-to-back -back games, they allowed 10 goals. So 20 goals allowed in two games. Even after all that happened, the Chicago Blackhawks somehow are below them in the standings. Chicago is dead last, 32nd in the entire league. So obviously, there's only one logical thing I can do here, and that's rebuild the Chicago Blackhawks. But we're not just going to rebuild Chicago any normal way. No, I am trading absolutely every single single player on this team except for Connor Bedard. Bedard's going to be staying and we're going to be winning a Stanley Cup with him in Chicago but the rest of this team yeah everyone's being traded. We do have some good young guys like Kevin Korczynski he's only 19 years old and 80 overall but unfortunately he's not going to be staying on the team today we're going to be trading him away. Every player on the Chicago Blackhawks that's currently on their NHL roster is going to be traded in a few moments. We are going to be lucky though because we do get to hold on to Connor Bedard here but we have to build a competent team around him but there is a few more restrictions. And one of those restrictions is I can't trade for anyone over 25 years old, so we got to build a very young team here. And by building a very young team, it's pretty clear that we're not going to be competitive this season, and we're probably not going to be competitive next season. However, three, four years down the line, when all the young players on this team develop, we're going to be a powerhouse. But first, let's start making some trades. Also, while we figure out who we're going to be trading first here, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I want to pass the Detroit Red Wings and YouTube subscribers by the end of the month, and we don't have too much time left, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. On top of that, I'm going to be leaving my social media in the bottom left hand corner there. You should go follow those because I'm going to start posting on there a lot more frequently. I'm going to be dropping some amazing hockey takes on Twitter and then on Instagram you might see some behind the scenes stuff and I might go live from time to time. So I think I've done enough yapping here. Let's get right into the trades. Kevin Korczynski for William Eklund. This is actually a really good deal for us. We get a playmaker that's going to play alongside Bedard. These two guys are going to be our 1-2 combo on the first line. I think this is a really good deal. However, you better give me a pick or something back in exchange because I feel like Kevin Korczynski has a bit more trade value. Actually, I take that back. We are definitely not getting a third and fourth rounder, but we might be able to get a fourth. Never mind. I think we're actually just going to be going one for one here. This is actually a pretty equal trade. They're going to be saying no to Kevin Korczynski, but if we throw a seventh rounder in the deal, we're going to be able to get it done. So that's our first deal like that. Kevin Korczynski in the seventh rounder, and we're picking up William Eklund. So we moved on from the Anaheim Ducks, but I think this deal would actually be very interesting if we could pick up Sean Dersey, 86 overall defenseman. He's 24 years old, so he fits the restrictions here. JJ Moser, a 23-year-old, and then Matthias Maselli, an 84 overall. He could play some top six minutes for us. All of this for Seth Jones, Taylor Hall, and Jason Dickinson. I don't think this is going to get accepted. They're going to be saying no. They don't really want two forwards here. You know what? I don't necessarily want JJ Moser a ton. I feel like if we don't get him, we can get a different defenseman down the line. So instead of getting JJ Moser, Moser, how about you give me a third and fourth rounder? I'm going to send that over. They're going to be saying no. Can you at least give me a fourth round pick? So just like that, we're picking up Sean Dersey, Matias Maselli, and a fourth round pick. So in a lot of the deals we do, we want to be picking up multiple players and trading multiple players at the same time. So this package right here is going to be sent over to the Calgary Flames, Connor Zeri, Matt Coronado, and Jacob Pelche, three young guys that fit the core here. I'm going to be offering this package over. Obviously, they're going to be saying no. I'll take that fourth round pick, but I'm actually going to put it right back in because we're going to do a third and fourth rounder, and that's going to be enough to get this deal done. Okay, they're actually saying no here, but two third rounders would be enough. So here's another third round pick added into this deal right here, and we're going to be getting this deal done with the Calgary Flames. Now, a lot of the deals I'm doing are actually very stupid. Lucas Reichel, Athanasiu, a second rounder, and Jason Dickinson sent over to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Marchenko, Boquist, and Jake Bean. These are two good young defensemen, a great young forward. However, I'm giving up way too many draft picks right now. They're going to be saying yes to this deal, but I think we actually can get a draft pick back. Potentially a third round pick. I don't think we'll be able to get a third but maybe a fourth okay we were about to get absolutely finesse there can we get a third and fourth round pick if we can get both of those that would be absolutely huge here can we get two third round picks i think we actually might be able to get two third round picks here I was about to do this without the third rounders, but we can actually get the third round picks here. So thankfully Columbus didn't accept that first offer. We would have been screwed there. So trading Peter Mrazek's contract away has been so difficult because there's not a single team in the NHL that wants him. But Philly, would you be willing to take on Peter Mrazek's contract for a sixth round pick? They're going to be saying no to that. Can you at least give me a seventh or something? I will literally give you a seventh round to take on his contract if I have to. I'm going to be offering this over to the Philadelphia Flyers. Luckily, they're going to be saying yes here. So we were able to dump Peter Mrazek because honestly, it was impossible to include him in any 
any other deal. Since we were able to get rid of Peter Mrazek, we can continue to make some moves here. And Tyler Johnson, a prospect, and Ryan Donato, along with the fourth round picks, can be sent over to the Nashville Predators. And we're going to try to pick up Tomasino and Luke Evangelista. Unfortunately, they're going to be saying no to this deal because they don't really want multiple forwards. But I don't really care what you want. Here's a third and fourth round pick. I don't know why I took the fourth out, only to include it once again. But I'm offering this package over to the Predators. They're saying yes. And now we've got another deal done. So a package like this might be bringing in our starting goaltender. And that's going to be Joel Hole for, of course, from the St. Louis Blues. He's an 81 overall, but we're also going to be bringing Jake Neighbors onto the team. These are two really young guys that could develop into solid players for us. So I'm sending this package over to St. Louis. They're accepting immediately. And just like that, we've got ourselves another trade completed. Now, this is one man that we haven't seen in a minute. Justin Barron. He's a legend on the channel. And Sean Farrell, you're not really a legend on the channel, but you might become one today because I'm going to be acquiring both of you guys from the Montreal Canadiens. So I've changed my mindset when it comes to trading draft picks. I'm perfectly fine with trading all of our draft picks away except for first round picks because we are going to suck this season and we're going to suck next season. So there's the potential for those two picks to both become top five. And if they are top five picks, I want to make sure I have them. Now, I think this could be a really interesting deal for us. Two prospects along with the fourth rounder over to the Toronto Maple Leafs and we're acquiring Matthew Nyes. They're going to be saying no to the deal because they don't want two defensemen. But you know what? I don't really care what you want, Toronto. I'll give you another fourth rounder in order to get this deal done. So I'm sending that over. They're accepting it. And we just acquired Matthew Nyes. All right, I'm going to keep it a thousand with y'all. I don't exactly remember who was on the roster. I'm pretty sure Blackwell was on the NHL roster. Taylor Radish obviously was, but there was like two other players. I guess Zach Sanford's one of them. Zaitsev, he's another that we still have to trade away. And some of these guys are actually going to be difficult to trade away. Okay, never mind. Zaitsev, you're off to the Boston Bruins for a seventh round pick. I actually thought that deal was going to be very difficult to get done. I guess not. And we're not done with trades because if it's that simple, then I'll just keep doing them like that. Colin Blackwell, where are we going to be able to get for you? We can get a couple young guys here, but I would actually prefer some draft picks. So I'll take a fifth rounder from the Carolina Hurricanes. So the next man up's Taylor Radish, and he's also going to be sent over to the Carolina Hurricanes. We're getting a fifth rounder for him. I completely forgot that we still have Nick Felino on this team, and there's no way anyone's going to take on his contract. Never mind, there's actually a few suitors. We could pick up Mike Hoffman and then trade him away. But I think one of these guys is probably below 25 years old. I'm pretty sure this is just somebody with 7th D potential and they're a young prospect. How old is this man right here? 18 years old. Hey, we're getting rid of the Nick Felino money, so I'll definitely do it. Philly's really getting a steal by taking on Nick Felino's contract. That's wild. I know for a fact Zach Sanford has to be traded and he's going to be the next guy up here. Where is he? Zach Sanford, where are we going to be sending you to? Potentially the Boston Bruins. But nope, we're going to have a reunion in Carolina because that's where you're going as well. Okay, we keep calling this man up to the NHL but we never do anything with him. Now, this is going to be one of the last guys we have to ship out here. We're going to be sending him to the New York Rangers, and we're going to be picking up Rempe. He's a hard hitter. He's definitely a hard hitter, that's for sure. So we've got to pick up a backup goaltender, and ironically, we're going back to the Philadelphia Flyers. Arison, you're a great guy. You got medium starter potential, so we're going to make you our starting goaltender or potentially the backup. I don't know who's going to start between you and Joel Holfer. You're probably going to split starts, but for now, you're a pretty good guy for us. Okay, so we're trading a ton of picks here, but it's going to work out for us. Somebody with 7th deep potential, two fifth rounders, and a seventh. And we're going to be picking up Farivari from the Washington Capitals. I guess we're not going to be picking them up for this price. Honestly, I thought that actually would be enough here, but I guess two seventh rounders is what's going to be. So two sevenths, two fifths, and somebody with 7th deep potential, and we got Farivari. But we still need to pick up one more defenseman. So this is the final trade. And then I believe we've traded every single player on the roster. We're getting Brandstrom from the Ottawa Senators. And just like that, we're complete here. You're really not accepting that. You're really not going to accept that. Here's a seventh round pick and then you're going to accept it. Honestly, teams be bugging nowadays. Here's a sixth rounder because we don't have a seventh. Oh, wow. We're getting a great deal here because we got a sixth round pick as well. I'm shaking my head at you, Ottawa. I don't know what you're talking about. So after spending all that time crafting our roster, this is what it's going to look like. Eklund, Bedard, Matthew Nyes on the first line, Marchenko, Connor Zeri, Matias Maselli on the second. The bottom six here isn't actually necessarily that bad. I mean, it's not good by any means, but it definitely could be a lot worse. And we're also going to be getting boosts on every single line fit here. Surprisingly, this team actually has really good line fits. I'm actually kind of surprised at that because normally when I make blind trades like that, it does not work out for us. But it actually did this time around. The defense is pretty solid here. I mean, it's not good by any means, but I mean, the lowest overall is Baron and he's an 80. I can definitely live with that. The goaltending situation, not the greatest in the world, but we do have an 81 overall. Joel Hole for leading the way. Arison, he's going to be a good backup and an 80 overall. We're definitely not going to be the worst team in the league, but we're not going to be one of the best. I say we finish around the 20th overall range. I also think I'm gassing this team up a little bit too much because I mean, look at our forward core. The bottom six is not it. It's not good, but it's not bad. 
yeah, I guess we'll see how this team performs. Also, I feel like it should go without saying we're not making any trades at the trade deadline. I just spent the past half an hour making trades. I don't want to make any more here. So yeah, we're going to simulate the season here and see what happens. If we make the playoffs, that would be best case scenario. Actually, best case scenario would be dead last and we get the first overall pick. That's actually best case scenario. All right, so this Chicago Blackhawks team is going to be something very special in about three years because I don't know how it's possible here, but we exceeded expectations big time. 14th in the entire league with a 43 30 and 9 record there is no reason the chicago blackhawks should be 14th in the entire league we should be bottom five but hey if this team's going to exceed expectations let's win in year number one now obviously if we're going to be making the playoffs here Connor bedard has got to be leading the way 88 points he's got 39 goals and 49 helpers matias maselli a great season from him 66 points matthew nye 64 eklund 62 i can't complain with any of these numbers from anyone on this team and the goaltending i might be able to complain about these numbers but even still joel holfer 33 wins five shots and nine 908 and a 286 considering what this team is right now and everyone's going to continue to get better these are incredible numbers but this is where the real test starts we're taking on the dallas stars in the first round let's be completely honest here if we win one game then that's a success for us so not only have we won one game here but we've actually won back to back in game three and game four so if we can win three in a row in game number five here and take the lead in the series what is going on with the chicago blackhawks are we really going to make it to the second round here unfortunately we're going to be dropping game six so that means we're off to game seven no real talk game seven in the very first series of this video is actually a good sign for this team okay we're down two nothing already but we're gonna be bouncing back big time we have the lead entering the third period can we close it out here it looks like we can pick up another three goals we scored six unanswered and we're off to the second round how is it possible the chicago blackhawks are off to the second round here that makes no sense so the Winnipeg Jets are actually going to be doing us a massive solid here as they're going to be taking out the Colorado Avalanche in the first round. So it's going to be the fourth seeded Blackhawks taking on the third seeded Winnipeg Jets. There's a very good chance that we could take down Winnipeg here because Dallas is definitely a better team than Winnipeg. But you never know because each series is a brand new matchup and anything can happen. So I think it's safe to say that reality is set in here because after winning game one, we're going to be dropping three straight. Is it going to be four straight in game number five? It looks like it will be a 6-2 loss. Given absolutely everything that happened and considering we traded the entire Blackhawks team away, I'll take a second round exit in year number one. So after Winnipeg took us down, they ended up losing to the Vancouver Canucks in the conference finals. And then surprise, surprise, the Vancouver Canucks are going to lose to the Boston Bruins in the Stanley Cup final. If I've said it once, that means I've said it a million times. Vancouver always loses in the Stanley Cup final and it's beyond ridiculous. But Chicago, a second round exit's pretty good for you guys. The entire core is going to be coming back next season. Everyone's going to be improved. I'm expecting this team to do big things. All right, so I know for a fact there's been a roster update recently, but I didn't realize that Parasak has dropped to me medium top six potential i know for a fact he used to have medium elite so it's actually a bit of a shame that he's dropped to top six i still believe in you man you can be that guy so now that we've made those two selections it's time to get into the re-sign phase and we're about to re-sign a lot of players so we're going to start with sean Dursey, and an extension like this is actually pretty good for us considering we're only doing five years max here four years at five million dollars that's an absolute steal for an 86 and I can guarantee he's going to be better next season. Marchenko is also going to be looking for a bit of a bag here. We're going to do 4.6 for the next four with him. He's an 86 overall, so that's also a fantastic deal. Jake Bean, more than likely you're going to be walking here because I don't really want to give you 5.5 million, but you are up to an 84 overall. I'll qualify you as an RFA and then I'll think about that deal. Honestly, that's not even that bad. So you know what, Jake Bean, I actually will do an extension with you. We're going to do 4.9 for the next four years. Jacob Pelche, 1.4 for the next four. For an 81 overall, that's a great deal. And Thomas Sino, I'm assuming that you're going to be a fantastic contract as well. We're going to be doing four years at 1.675. Stick on the ice legend, Justin Barron, 1.6 for four years. And then Eric Brandstrom will do four years with you as well. And we're also doing 1.6 million. Okay, so we actually had a handful of guys decline deals here. Sean Dursey, I don't really want to mess around. So here's 5.4 for the next four. Marchenko, we're going to be doing a similar deal with you, except it's going to be 5 million for the next four. Jake Bean, I'm not surprised you said no to your deal, but can we do 5.2 for the next four? I feel like that's a reasonable deal for you. And then Brandstrom, you're the last player that declined a deal. I'm just going to do exactly what you want. 1.825 for the next four. I don't really want to hold out on a couple hundred K. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to give Sean Dursey exactly what he wants. Just kidding. Here's 5.6 for the next four. And Jake Bean, I'm going to be honest, I'm not willing to do anything more than 5.3. But how about we just do 5.3 for the next three? So we made all those signings during the re-sign phase, but now we have to go with some extensions and we're going to start with Matthew Nyes. So Matthew Nyes is actually going to be a great deal here. We're going to do 3.7 for the next three years. 
Boquist is also going to be a pretty solid deal. We're going to be doing 4.7 for the next three. Connor Zeri, you're up to an 84 overall, so I'm perfectly fine with giving you 3.7 for the next four. Luke Evangelista, you better turn out to be one of the greatest players of all time because for some reason I have eight rookie cards of you. I don't know how it's possible because between you and Tomasino, I think I have 12 rookie cards. I don't know how it's possible because I swear in every single pack I open, I get an Evangelista rookie and a Tomasino. So you guys better turn into two of the greatest players of all time. One rookie card I've never pulled, Jake Neighbors, and I guess we're going to do 1.4 for the next three. Pharrell, I actually just pulled a rookie card of you today, so I'll give you an extension as well. We'll do 1.75 million for the next three years. And to cap it all off, Matt Coronado, 1.8 for the next three. That actually might not be capping it off because I think we might have to give some extensions to goaltenders here. And Joel Holfer, I'll give you one. What are you looking for? We'll do three years at 1.4 million. I made a restriction at the beginning of this video. When it came to trading players, I couldn't trade for anyone over 25 years old. That's going to stay. That rule is now going to turn into I can't acquire any player over 25 years old. And that includes free agency. If I want to sign somebody below 25 years old, that means I'm going to have to acquire them through their RFA rights. I'm going to have to give up some picks. Obviously, I'm not going to want to do that, but I am still going to want to upgrade this team a little bit. So let's be honest with ourselves. We all knew it was only a matter of time before Jeremy Swayman joined the team. He's 25 years old right now, and that means I can acquire him still. He's a 90 overall. I'm giving up our first round pick for this season. I really thought that first round pick would be enough, even though it's not matching their trade block. Jeremy Swayman, we're still going to be picking you up though. If I throw Arison in this deal, I think that actually might be enough to get this one done. So I'm going to send that over. They're still going to be saying no here. What else do you want? A second or a third round pick? We can make something happen here. So here's a third rounder for 2026. All of this for Jeremy Swayman. I'm going to send it over. They're still saying no, but we're close. I know for a fact that we're pretty close here. Here's a sixth rounder as well. Is this going to be enough for Jeremy Swayman? They're still saying no. I'll throw a fourth rounder in as well. This is going to be the package right here that's going to allow us to get Jeremy Swayman. A first, Arison, a third, a sixth, and a fourth. All of this sent over to the Boston Bruins. We're really not getting it done for this. All right, I'm taking out that sixth rounder and I'm throwing in another third. This package right here, this is enough for Jeremy Swayman. There we go. We got our goaltender for the future. No doubt about it. Now we just have to make some small moves. But I actually might not make any more small moves here because we have a really good team and everyone's going to be better. I think we might just run it back for one more year. Now, Jeremy Swayman definitely isn't going to be doing us any favors here, but for a 90 overall, this is definitely worth it. $8 million per year for the next seven seasons. Jeremy Swayman's an absolute dog, only 25 years old. Look at all those X factors and he's a 90 overall. Yeah, I think that might have been the missing piece for us. So this is the other move we're going to make here. We're going to upgrade the defensive cores. We're going to be acquiring Cam York. 1.6 million. He's an 83 overall and he's going to get better because he's going to be playing some top minutes for us here. Bramstrom and a second round pick is going to be sent over. So Cam York, a third and fourth rounder. I don't think we can get the third and fourth rounder. Maybe we can just get the third rounder in this deal. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're getting that, but you got to give me some sort of draft pick. So let's see if we can get a fourth and fifth round pick. I don't think they're going to be saying yes to this deal. Can you at least give me a fourth rounder? You got to give me something here we're getting this deal done and now our team's ready to win a stanley cup i mean that's a complete lie we still need a couple more years of development maybe two so this is what we're doing cam york will give you an extension we're doing four million dollars for the next three years that'll keep you around for the rest of the rebuild now this team right here they're going to be dominating the league ain't no way there was only two players that rejected my deal and one of them was luke evangelista here's 2.3 million stop being an l man's also become the greatest player of all time we've been through this i have 13 rookie cards of you I want those cards to have a lot of value. Also, Jeremy Swayman, what are you looking for? You're looking for a lot less money now. We can do $7 million per year for the next seven. I have no clue why you declined my last deal, and now you're accepting $7 million, but I think you will be. Bro's agent is fumbling. Okay, so obviously over the offseason, all the young guys on this team are getting better, and Carbidardi is leading the way at a 93 overall. Eklund's up to an 86. He's got himself an X Factor. Matthew Nyes, he's up to an 85. The contract he signed, this is going to be a great deal for us. The rest of the team here, you know what? They continue to develop. We actually have a really solid forward core. At the end of the day, we have all 80 overalls here. The second line might not be the greatest in the world, but give them one more year to develop and then they're going to be able to hold it down with the best in the league defensively we still have a couple weaknesses here i mean the first pairing is absolutely fantastic i think by rights we should technically do this because then we have Bo quist and cam york on the first line the only problem with this is then we have two offensive defensemen. I think I'd rather have one offensive defenseman here and then another offensive defenseman here. Spread out the offense a little bit. I think that makes a bit more sense for us. Although the third pairing doesn't have the greatest line fits in the world here, we have two solid players that we can rely on, so I think that's going to work for us. And then the goaltending situation, we have 90 overall Jeremy Swayman. He's 25 years old. What else needs to be said? We're set in between the pipes. Now, the only concern I have for this season is did we play over our heads last season? Because I don't think we're as good of a team as we showed. Like, we ended up making the 
playoffs. We're 14th in the entire league, but I don't think the Chicago Blackhawks are actually that good. I think we're going to take a slight step back this season, but next season when all the guys develop a bit more, then we'll take over the league. We just got to trust the process here and not make any stupid decisions. Well, I'm happy to say that last season definitely wasn't a fluke and the Chicago Blackhawks continue to get better here. We're eighth in the entire league and we're sitting with a pretty solid record of 45, 32, and 5. The offense absolutely flying, 3.4 goals per game. I know it's 3.39, but we're going to round up for the sake of that. Defensively, though, we're still not that great. 3.07 allowed. Everyone on our team is going to continue to get better. So not only is our offense going to be better next season, but so is our defense. And with everyone on this team playing better, that means Bedard's numbers are going to be better. 99 points here, 48 goals, 51 helpers. William Eklund, 89 points. Look at all the X factors he has, and he's up to an 89 overall. He's ready to dominate the league. Connor Zerdy, he's got 74 points. Matthew Nye, 65. Things are looking absolutely fantastic for this team. And Jeremy Swayman, 40 wins, 7 shouts, a 907 and a 295. These are numbers I can live with. I mean, I can live with these numbers. I would like to see some better numbers. You also have high elite potential now, so that trade actually worked out really well for us. We definitely got you at a steal. But I don't care what the numbers during the regular season look like because this is when it matters. We're taking on the Arizona Coyotes first. It's time to take them out like we did Dallas and make it to the second round. But this time, we're not going to be folding. Right now, Arizona can't even compete with us. We're not in the same league here. We have a 3-1 series lead, and in game number five, we're going to close this one out in a massive victory. 5-4 in and overtime, and we're off to the second round. Now, a matchup like this really separates the good teams from the bad. It's the Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Colorado Avalanche. If we can beat Colorado, or even if we can compete with them, then we know that we're legit. If Colorado sweeps us, though, and absolutely dominates us in every series, then we're actually not that good of a team. It's time to separate the good from the bad. So I'm happy to say we've at least been competing with the Colorado Avalanche. We've split the series so far, so game five is going to be a massive one. Who's going to be taking the lead? It looks like it's going to be us. We're dominating this game three to one. I mean, that's not really dominating. It was a pretty close game and it was probably an empty netter, but game six, can we close this one out in advance? No, it's going to be a one nothing loss. Colorado's going to be picking up the shutout and now we're off to game seven. Now game seven, it's always an exciting game. The Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Colorado Avalanche and we're dominating here. Bedard's already got the trick and this game's over. Six to three. How many goals did this man pick up? I think he picked up five goals. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, Bedard, five goals here. That was something. That was just pure dominance. This man picked up five goals on eight shots. He shot 62% in this game in 18 minutes. 18 minutes and he had five goals. Yeah, so Bedard's good. He's pretty good. Also, shout out to Eklund for picking up three assists here. Also, Tomasino, he picked up one goal. And Evangelista... You did nothing. I mean, you took one shot, so yeah, there's that. So now that we've proved we can compete with the best in the entire league, it's time to beat the best. The Vancouver Canucks, they're the number one seed from the Pacific Division. And then over in the Eastern Conference, we still have the two number one seeds from the Atlantic and the Metro. The best of the best are still left. So even if we can get past Vancouver, it's going to be a tough matchup no matter what. So Vancouver's obviously going to be putting up a fight against us, but we can compete with the best in the league. Game number five is going to be a massive one. We got to take that one. That's exactly what we're doing, a 6-2 victory. And in game number six can we close this out and advance to the stanley cup final yes we can now we have the new york rangers it all comes down to this can chicago step up when it matters most of course we can because that's what we've been doing this entire playoff run so let's lock in chicago can we win a stanley cup here in year number two and then build a dynasty here i think we're going to be able to do that we have a 3-1 series lead and in game number five we're closing this out we're winning the stanley cup in five games the chicago blackhawks have done the impossible now I'm going to keep it a buck 50. I did not expect us to be winning a Stanley Cup in the year 2025. We're in year number two of this five-year rebuild. Chicago's already got one. Things are looking fantastic. Connor Bedard, 34 points, 17 goals, 17 assists. William Eklund, 28 points. Matthew Nyes, 23. Sean Farrell, I actually just picked up your rookie card today. You're picking up 16 points in 23 games. You're a big-time performer. Jake Neighbors, St. Louis legend. He's looking fantastic. You know who else is looking great? Jeremy Swayman, 15 wins, three shots, a 933 and a 2 13. No wonder we won a Stanley Cup. This team is better than everyone from top to bottom. And you know what's even better? This entire team's coming back next season. We're going to be running it back with the exact same core. Everyone's going to be even better. Yeah, we're going to be hoisting a couple Stanley Cups in this video, that's for sure. Now, obviously, through building this team, we've traded a lot of draft picks away. So that means in this draft, we're only going to have one selection here. And this guy had bottom six potential, so he's not going to develop into anything special for us. On top of that, we've done a great job of keeping the team together here, so we don't have to spend any money during the resign phase. Now, after saying I didn't have to spend any money during the resign phase. We have to spend money now because Connor Bedard wants an extension. This is way more reasonable than what I was expecting. 
So Connor Bedard, you're gonna be returning to this team, but less than $10 million, we're doing 9.8 for the next eight. That's an insanely good deal. And you know who else is signing a great deal? William Eklund, 8.8 .8 for the next five years. These are two guys that are playing some massive minutes on our team, and we just lock them down long term. Matias Masel, you're another really important piece to this team, and you're playing some big second line minutes for us, so how's 5.7 for the next three sound? To finish it all off, I do want to give Fairvari an extension, but I'm not really sure if 4.5 is worth it for a 25 year old who's an 83 overall. You also don't have necessarily the greatest line fit on this team, so I think I'm going to hold off on an extension for you. Alright, so we were able to win a Stanley Cup with this team last year, but there was one thing different. The team wasn't as good. Bedard a 96, Eklund a 92, Matthew Nyes an 86, Marchenko, he's up to an 85, he's got X Factors, Connor Zarian 85, Matias Masselian 87 with X Factors, I shouldn't say X Factors, an X Factor, and the rest of this team absolutely incredible this team has no weaknesses and everyone's better the defense that's looking strong like usual the next two pairings here outside the first they probably could use a bit of work because we don't have the greatest line fits whatsoever but you know what this team won a stanley cup and we're gonna do it again the goaltending that's fantastic as well jeremy swayman you've dropped to an 89 overall that makes absolutely no sense but you did pick up another x factor just do what you did last postseason plain and simple like what were your numbers during the postseason a 933 and a 213 yeah that's pretty easy just do it again it shouldn't be that difficult right like a 933 and a 213 it's not like these are insane numbers by any means also while you're at it do this during the regular season and help us win 60 games i'm setting low expectations for you you should be able to achieve this no but real talk imagine if you lived up to those expectations and then during the regular season had a 940 and like a 190 and then we won 75 games that would be absolutely wild also for the first time in this video we're actually going to simulate to the trade deadline because we might be making a trade here because ideally i would like to fix up the third pairing or even the second a little bit we don't have the greatest line fits here so improving that would probably be a smart move for our team so the chicago blackhawks are looking like a fantastic team although we're not in the top seven here there's one thing you do have to realize we've only played 61 games basically every other team has played five more games than us we have a 35 22 and 4 record an offense that's absolutely flying 3.67 goals per game well the defense definitely needs some work 3.26 but don't worry because we're going to be changing that real quick we're making a couple trades here and obviously the trades have nothing to do with our forward core because bedard's got 51 goals in 61 games 35 helpers 86 points points here Eklund's got 78 Matthew Nyes 57 he's going to gain some x-factors over the offseason this team's going to be in a much better spot next season I mean it's hard to be in a much better spot than where we are we're a top team in the NHL meanwhile the goaltending we already know Jeremy Swayman is doing his thing 28 wins four shots an 894 and a 326 this ain't it I'm going to take back exactly what I said I said you were looking fantastic this is not it right here these numbers need to be better so obviously we're a really young team and we want to stay young and Pavel Mintyukov I think you could be that guy for us you have one year left on your deal at an 84 overall. Obviously, we're going to have to pay you, but we got the money to pay you. Baron, a second and first round pick is going to be sent over to the Anaheim Ducks. I feel like this is going to be enough. I guess not. We're going to have to throw something else into this deal. Honestly, I'm completely fine with that because I know we're going to be a fantastic team. Here's the third round pick as well. I feel like this is the missing piece. If you don't want to accept the third and second round pick, then we'll do two first rounders. This is quite a bit to get Pavel Mintyukov, but honestly, I think it's worth it. But if I'm going to be doing this deal, you got to give me something back in exchange. It's at least give me a second rounder or something i'm going to offer that over they're going to be saying no is it really going to take baron and two first round picks i'm sending that over they're still saying no okay we're getting out of hand here because this is an absolutely stupid deal but you know what i don't really care because minty yukov you're gonna be the missing piece for this team we got absolutely finesse there but i don't think we actually did i think that's a really smart move for us all right so never mind he's already been given an extension at 6.5 million so i guess he's gonna be sticking around for the rest of the rebuild we don't have to worry about giving him an extension so this is what we're doing with the lines york and Derzy on the first pairing and then boquist and minty on the second we're getting a plus one boost here a plus two on the top pairing pairing we're not going to worry about the third pairing because both of these guys show up to play we're in a better position than we were before that's for sure so considering where we were sitting at the trade deadline i'm actually very disappointed in this team eighth in the entire league with a 44 32 and 6 record 3.44 goals that actually got worse while the defense 3.27 that stayed the exact same why is this team just not performing by rights we should be much better than we were last season with all the progression we saw we even have some better line fits here 
but the team still continues to disappoint. I mean, to be fair, what am I yapping about here? Because we did win a Stanley Cup last season. Connor Bedard picked up 64 goals and 45 helpers for 109 points. Eklund's picking up 98 points. Matthew Nye is 71. We already know this team can perform in the playoffs, but the rest of these guys did not look good this season. I don't know why they weren't playing defense, but they just weren't. So you guys better step it up in the playoffs. And our first round matchup isn't going to be an easy one because of course, why would the first round ever be easy for this team? We have the Winnipeg Jets in the first round, but so far we are undefeated in the the first round we haven't lost a series so far so let's continue that trend right here so i told y'all in the first round this team shows up when it matters most and in game five we're going to be closing out here a massive 5-2 victory this is a huge upset four wins in a row the chicago blackhawks are rolling and Connor bedard of course is leading the way so the colorado avalanche are ready to match up against us they have a chip on their shoulder because we took them out in the second round last season and went on to win the stanley cup but you know what we're looking to do the exact same thing we're going to take out colorado here then we're going to face the vancouver canucks in the conference final Finals, and then we'll make it to back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals where we're going to be completing a repeat against the New York Rangers. That's my prediction for the rest of the postseason. So through the first two games, the Avalanche were looking good. But since then, we've been looking a bit better. We've won back-to-back -back games here. We're going to make it three straight with a win in game number five. And in game number six, it's going to be four straight. When the games matter most, Jeremy Swayman shows up. One goal allowed here, two goals allowed here, two goals allowed here. When we need Jeremy Swayman to show up, he's that guy. Now I told y'all exactly what's going to happen. Chicago's taking on Vancouver and then in the Stanley Cup final we're going to meet the New York Rangers. New York's facing the Toronto Maple Leafs so they're not going to lose to Toronto. Chicago versus the Rangers in the Stanley Cup final and then Chicago's coming out on top in six games. Now I've been dropping straight gems so far in the postseason. I've been telling y'all exactly what's going to happen. Okay maybe I've been just completely capping. We're down 3-1 in the series but it's comeback time. We're winning a massive one here 3-0 and in game six are we going to be able to bounce back once again? Of course we are. Game 7, Chicago versus Vancouver. Meanwhile, the New York Rangers, they're off to the Stanley Cup Final. Now, we have a lot of big-time players, and it's time for some big-time plays to be made here. Zary's going to be picking up the first goal of the game. I don't know if it's Zari or Zary. I think it's Zari. I think I've been saying his last name wrong the entire time, but that doesn't matter because the Chicago Blackhawks are dominating here, and we're closing this game out. 5-1, and we have the New York Rangers in the Stanley Cup Final. I told y'all this was going to happen. Now we already know what's going on here. I told you it was going to be the New York Rangers and it's going to be a six game series. So I'm going to simulate through the first six games of this series and we're going to win a Stanley Cup. I guess it's not going to take six games. In five games, we're back to back Stanley Cup champions. Jeremy Swayman, you are him. Plain and simple. Without Jeremy Swayman, we're not winning. I mean, we also kind of need Connor Bedard, but I mean, Jeremy Swayman's him. Plain and simple. Like a shutout here in game number five. Yeah, without Jeremy Swayman, we're not winning like this. So Connor Bedard, of course, you got to lead the way here. 14 goals, 8 assists for 22 points. Eklund was right up there with you. He's got 22 points. Marchenko, 17. Connor Zeri or Zari, he's got 15 points. But the goaltending, absolutely phenomenal. Jeremy Swayman, 15 wins, 2 shots, a 916, a 267. He's been able to win us back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. But now it's time to complete the three-peat, something that doesn't happen very often. So right now, the draft is not looking that good. But two future third-round picks from the Arizona Coyotes, that could be the move for this package right here. I'm going to send that over over unfortunately they're saying no here at least give me a sixth round pick or something back as well i mean you got to give me something here i know for a fact we can get the third rounder but i want that sixth as well now there's only one man we need to bring back here and that's martin Ferrari. so we're going to do 4.25 for the next five years and honestly i think there's the potential that we trade him away also if you're wondering what all these guys are doing here we needed extra forwards to put in the nhl or have healthy scratches i mean to be fair parsak we did draft and i am going to sign him here because he could be a good trade asset for us because i think we should make one more move for another defenseman so here's the thought process with a trade like this jake bean does not have a good fit on defensive pairings whatsoever however soderstrom there's a chance that he can found all defensive pairings and that's going to include the third so that's why we're going to be acquiring him and we're also going to free up some money I mean, freeing up money doesn't really mean too much here. We just want to get Soderstrom, who has a better fit, because we're not allowed to sign free agents, so there's no point in clearing up money. So they did say no to that last deal, but I'll throw in a sixth round pick, and that'll be enough to get this one done. Soderstrom, welcome to the team. So that's the lone move we're making here. We've won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. So why screw up the core here? Let's just get ready for next season. So the chance that a repeat is very possible here. Bedard, Eklund, Matthew Nyes, Marchenko, Connor Zeri, Matias Maselli. The bottom six is absolutely fantastic like usual. This 
offense was rolling. We won back to back Stanley Cups, no point screwing it up. The defense is looking the exact same here, except we added Soderstrom, and that was a smart pickup because he has a fantastic line fit here. I guess you can't see it. Hold on, let me move. There you go. That's a great line fit. We love to see it. And the goaltending, we already know what Jeremy Swayman does. He wins playoff games. I don't care what you do during the regular season. You always step it up in the postseason, and that's when it matters most. Okay, so there's one thing that we always have to remember about the Chicago Blackhawks team. During the regular season, we're not going to perform great, but this season's worse than any other. 15th in the entire league with a 31, 23, and 9 record. The offense is still pretty good, but the defense is not good whatsoever. At the end of the day, though, we know this team can perform in the playoffs. They seem to do it every single year, so I don't care where we are in the standings. We can compete with the best in the league. Bedard's 70 points, 37 goals here. Eklund's got 67 points points Marchenko's got 60 and Jeremy Swayman yeah these numbers look absolutely terrible here but you step it up when it matters most look at his past two regular seasons when he's won a Stanley Cup an 894 and a 329 and a 907 and a 295 then we go to the playoffs and he just completely turns it up here Jeremy Swayman I don't care what you do in the regular season as long as you can get us in the playoffs I know you'll perform so we really can't make any moves here because I don't really want to trade anyone away we're a pretty solid team let's just get ready for the Stanley Cup run and let's get ourselves another all right so we're not going to talk about what happened this season we're not a top 10 team we're not a top 15 team i'm sad to say we actually didn't even make the playoffs this season we finished 20th in the entire league with a 38 35 and 9 record we did not win after the trade deadline we were an awful team and to me that makes absolutely no sense considering how this team should be getting a lot better all the players here are young bedard he didn't have a great year only 88 points eklund 78 points marchenko 73 did anyone have a negative plus minus i think everyone was positive never mind the fourth line and third line were not good here but even still we had a pretty solid top six we should have been able to make the playoffs joel holfer you're not the starter i don't know why i was showing your numbers jeremy swayman 33 wins here seven shots a 907 and a 293 I don't know what happened. I really don't. We won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, and now we're not making the playoffs with the exact same core. So over the offseason, of course, we're going to be making some moves to upgrade this team because there's no reason that we should not make the playoffs. Like, honestly, what are we talking about here? Tampa's going to be winning the Stanley Cup. Shout out to them, but even still. How is Chicago not making the playoffs here? That makes no sense. No, but in all seriousness, how did we go from winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, making the playoffs every single season, except for year number four? Like year number four, our team should be better. Everyone on this team developed. We should be in a much better spot, but nope. We actually declined, got worse, and this was the worst season we've ever had. How does that make any sense? Like by rights, this is the best team we've ever had because everyone's got better over the past four years. But when it comes to our record, nah, that somehow got worse. So I don't know what we're going to do for the final year here. Obviously, we're going to make some upgrades to the third and fourth line. But outside of that, I feel like we should just run it back with the exact same team. The top six is set. Our defense is looking fantastic. I don't know. we got to make some small upgrades to this team. I don't know what it's going to cost, but hopefully we can get something good here. All right, so in the draft, we did get one elite potential player. But obviously, we're going to be trading them because we got to be winning next season, seeing as it is the final year. Unfortunately, though, low elite potential players don't really have a lot of trade value. But you know what? He might be able to help us get somebody so obviously we're going to be bringing back soderstrom for exactly what he wants he fits on the third pairing but even still you cost us a chance at another stanley cup you cost us a chance at that three pete i didn't make any changes to this team other than soderstrom right here and the second i brought him onto the team we fell apart it's all his fault i'm putting all the blame on him that's the only re-signing we're making here but no, Soderstrom really cost us that Stanley Cup. I have a really, really, really good plan here. Is the plan going to work? Probably not. But we could potentially be bringing in a superstar player. It's going to cost us a lot, but just watch what I'm about to cook up here. Okay, so let me explain the thought process here. I said at the beginning of the video that I wasn't allowed to bring anyone in that was over 25 years old. Now, this man right here isn't over 25 years old. He has franchise potential and he's 91 overall. The only issue is he's an RFA with franchise potential. There's absolutely no way I could trade for him however if i offered him 12 million dollars literally all the money that we have would he join the team it's going to cost us four first round picks but this is the final year of the rebuild so why not we're going to see what philly thinks and if we're able to bring him onto the team then that would be massive for us so now it's a waiting game of course he's going to accept the contract but the real question is is philly going to match the deal I fully expect them to be matching the deal. Now, of course, he's accepting the contract. Philly's going to match this unless they don't have any cap space and they literally can't whatsoever. So is this man going to be joining the team? Are we going to be pairing him up alongside Connor Bedard? There we go. We just acquired a franchise potential player for four first round picks. It's the final year here. 
let's go win a Stanley Cup. This is a very high risk move. If this works out for us, we'll definitely make the playoffs and be one of the best teams in the entire league. If this doesn't work out, we're not winning a Stanley Cup. We probably won't even make the playoffs. And that's the final year of the rebuild. We can't be folding here. We gotta hope this works out. In all seriousness, if this doesn't work out, I might break a controller. Vidar, Gionta, Eklund on the first line. Maselli, Zeri, Marchenko on the second line. The first and second line are both getting a plus five boost. The bottom six, it's a good bottom six here. There's no question about that. We're gonna be moving Matthew Nyes down to the third line. I think he can help the bottom six here. That's what really let us down last season. Defensively, we're still in a really good spot here. Sean Jersey, Bo Quist, he's up to an 87 overall. He's got an X factor. This is a good defense right here, and I believe in it. The only thing I don't believe in right now is Jeremy Swayman during the regular season but he's up to an 89 overall he's ready to bounce back if this team doesn't make the playoffs I don't know what I'll do I'll buy a Connor Bedard jersey how about that if this team right here does not make the playoffs and this video gets 5,000 likes I'll buy a Bedard jersey I'm so confident in this team making the playoffs I'm not even worried on top of that because I stand on business no trades here we're swimming right to the end of the season i have full confidence in the chicago blackhawks team there's absolutely no way this is going to backfire on me we're going to be a 50 win team i'm not even concerned i'm not going to lie it's low-key amazing how one trade can completely turn your team around second in the entire league with a 56 21 and 5 record a pretty solid offense in the defense absolutely spectacular 2.72 there is no reason the chicago blackhawks should be this good considering we only added one player to the team then again, that one player was phenomenal. No, he wasn't. He picked up 75 points. I'm expecting a lot more from a 91 overall who has franchise potential. Bedard, 51 goals, 51 assists for 102 points. Eklund's picking up 109. But Jeremy Swayman, I'm really curious to see what your numbers are. 45 wins, 2 shots, and 913 to 262. Okay, these numbers we can win a Stanley Cup with. I just need the big time performance to make some big time plays here and actually show up when it matters most. So now it's time to show up or shut up. Chicago Blackhawks were in the playoffs in the first round. We have the Arizona Coyotes. I'm looking past Arizona because this team doesn't lose in the first round. We either have Colorado or Winnipeg to take on next. So I told y'all we're not messing around in the first round. A quick sweep and we're off to the second round. I don't care who we take on, Chicago's built different. Okay, so there's absolutely no reason the Winnipeg Jets should be making it to the second round here. They won 39 games. We're not losing to a 39-win Winnipeg Jets team. I'm stating that right now. We're going to sweep them, and then we're off to the conference finals. Okay, Winnipeg's actually competing with us, and I'm a bit scared. We split the series so far, two games apiece. What's going on here? Hold on. Game six, I'm turning the face cam on because it's getting serious. We cannot lose in game six here. We're supposed to be winning another Stanley Cup. A 3-2 victory, and we're off to game seven that's what i'm looking for so we already know the big time players are making big time plays here and it's time for chicago to dominate we're picking up the first two goals of the game in the second period though it's completely falling apart we had a three goal lead at one point but nah that three goal lead's gone third period make or break for this team who's going to be showing up Connor Zary is he's picking up the lone power play goal and we're off to the conference finals it should not have been this close though this was way too close a 4-3 victory Nah, Chicago, you're better than this. So now things are getting serious. Connor McDavid versus Connor Bedard. Connor versus Connor. May the best team win. But of course, that means the Chicago Blackhawks are going to be winning. No surprise here, Connor McDavid's not going to be making it easy on us. We've split the series so far, and that means Game 5 is going to be a massive one. A big 3-2 victory, and if we can win this one, we're going to be in the Stanley Cup Final. We're taking on the New Jersey Devils. New Jersey, I believe they were a 4 seed, but they're not going to be able to stop us. Chicago's rolling right now, and it looks like we're going to be taking this series. I guess not. We split the series so far. Game 5 is going to be a massive one. 7-2. We really just lost that game 7-2, but don't worry because we're going to show up in game number 6 here. Yeah, so showing up in game 6 did not work out for us. We lost 4-0. We didn't score a goal in an elimination game, and we allowed 7 goals in game number 5. That is something. Up until that final series, this team was looking absolutely fantastic. The second line definitely could have looked better. I mean, these guys completely fell apart in the postseason. I couldn't rely on them whatsoever. But there is one guy I can rely on. That's Jeremy Swayman. These numbers, though, not the best in the world. 14 wins, a 917, a 276. But I can't blame you for that game 5 performance. We allowed 7 goals. That wasn't on you. If we're allowing seven goals, then a lot of things went wrong for our team. And then in game six, we didn't score any goals. No, that's an absolute shame. We should have been better than that. But at the end of the day, we made three Stanley Cup final appearances, won two Stanley Cups in five years. We traded the entire Chicago Blackhawks team away. So I would say this was a pretty successful rebuild. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, comment Luke Evangelista. I have so many of his rookie cards. I need him to turn to the next Wayne Gretzky. And then those rookie cards can be worth about $1,000 a piece, maybe more. So shout out Luke Evangelista, the next man up.